move on? Because most life on this planet depends on light, either directly or indirectly, it is important to understand the nature of light and its essential role in photosynthesis. Visible light represents a very small portion of a vast continuous range of radiation called the electromagnetic spectrum. All radiation in this spectrum, extending from gamma rays to the longest radio waves, including visible light, they travel as waves. A wavelength is the distance from one wave peak to the next. So, as you can see here, there are various kind of electromagnetic radiation. The purple one here, gamma rays, it has very short wavelengths. While in this extremely low frequency ELF, it has a very long wavelength. Okay, in electromagnetic spectrum, we are interested on visible spectrum. This is the portion of electromagnetic spectrum that human can see, which is colors of the rainbow. Visible spectrum, it has wavelength ranges from 380 nanometer to 760 nanometer. This is where the energy is used in photosynthesis. So, the light that is uh, used in this photosynthesis is composed of small particles or packets of energy called photons. And as it is a visible light, and we normally see it as rainbow color, the wavelength that is shorter represented by violet light, it has more energy, has nearly twice as much energy as a photon of red light, which is 750 nanometer. So, the energy of a photon is inversely proportional to its wavelength. Shorter wavelength light has more energy per photon than longer wavelength light. Alright, when a molecule absorbs a photon of light energy, one of its electrons become energized, which means the electron shifts from a lower energy atomic orbital to a high energy orbital further away from the atomic nucleus. These can be represented in this figure. So this one atom that has electron, when photon strike, electrons will become energized. As it energize, basically it will move to a high energy orbital. At this state, the electron are excited. So this energized electron normally will return to the ground state to lowest and most stable energy level as shown by this figure. So as it go back to its normal state, the energy from the electron dissipate as heat or fluorescence as an emission of light of longer wavelength photon less energetic than the absorbed light or this electron will leave the atom and be accepted by an electron acceptor molecule which becomes reduced during photosynthesis. Let's have a look on photosynthetic pigments. Photosynthetic pigments are embedded in the thylakoid membranes. 
They are different pigments which absorb light of different wavelengths. Out of many pigments, chlorophyll is the main pigment of photosynthesis. It absorbs light primarily um, in blue and red regions of the visible spectrum and reflects green light. That's why plants usually appear green. So, any lights that fall under blue and red regions will be absorbed. Wavelengths that are not fall in this color are reflected or transmitted. All chlorophyll molecules in the membrane are associated with specific chlorophyll binding proteins. Let's have a look. There are two main parts of a chlorophyll molecule. A porphyrin ring, this is the part that absorbs light. It has magnesium atom at the center. This is the one. Porphyrin ring absorbs certain wavelength of visible light and reflect, reflect green light. And if you have a look at this porphyrin ring, the chemical structure here, what make chlorophyll become chlorophyll A or chlorophyll B is based on these chemical structures. If the porphyrin ring has CHO, hence this will become chlorophyll B. If it has CH3, then this shall become chlorophyll A. Number two, a long hydrocarbon side chain, extremely nonpolar, and this one will anchor the chlorophyll to the thylakoid membrane. Chlorophyll A, it initiates light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. It has a metal group in the porphyrin ring, appears bright green. Chlorophyll B, an accessory pigment and participates in photosynthesis. It has a CHO or a terminal carbonyl group in the porphyrin ring and it appears yellow-green. Next pigment, carotenoids. This is an accessory photosynthetic pigment. It has various color, yellow and orange. When an accessory pigment absorbs light, it is excited and its energy is transferred to chlorophyll A. As you have seen, the thylakoid member contains more than one kind of pigment. But normally, an instrument called a spectrophotometer is an instrument that will be used to measure the relative abilities of different pigments to absorb different wavelengths of light. Okay, so when different pigments that absorb different wavelengths of light, they are measured using spectrophotometer and absorption spectrum, spectrum is plotted. It is a kind of graph that shows the amount of light okay, that is absorbed by the pigment at specific wavelengths. So, from this absorption spectrum, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B absorb light mainly in the blue region and the red region. Blue region ranges from wavelength 422 to 492 nanometer. The red region wavelength ranges from 647 to 760 nanometer. Based on the high absorption of light that fall within this region, this suggests that blue and red light work best for photosynthesis, while green is the least effective color because we can clearly see that there is no high absorption peak seen here. In this graph of action spectrum of 
photosynthesis, the graph show the effectiveness of light at specific wavelength during photosynthesis. To obtain this action spectrum, scientists measure the rate of photosynthesis at each wavelength for leaf cells or tissues that are exposed to monochromatic light, which is light of one wavelength. So based on this, it shows that photosynthesis is most efficient in blue light and red light because the rate of photosynthesis is higher, while it is least efficient in green light. You can clearly see the photosynthesis rate is lower. Thus, when absorption spectrum is compared with action spectrum, which means we overlapped it, the action spectrum okay, for photosynthesis is much broader than absorption spectrum of chlorophyll A. This is due to the presence of accessory pigments. The accessory pigments, which is chlorophyll B and carotenoids. These two pigments absorb excessive light. It is beneficial because when they absorb excessive light, this will prevent chlorophyll from damage and also broaden the spectrum used for photosynthesis. Okay, guys. Um, that's all from me. I'll stop my uh, presentation until here. So thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.